Hey guys, I have behind me the test system I built several months ago with two LV6548 inverters from MPP Solar and my rack of SOK48 volt batteries. Now you may remember that I had a very difficult time flashing firmware to this inverter. In fact, the only way I was able to get this firmware loaded was to take apart the display on the front here and apply some forced cooling to the circuit board while I was trying the flashing process. It was a bit ridiculous, but it did work and it did get my inverter working again after I thought I had completely ruined it. Uh, so I received an interesting email this morning from Ian at Watts247 and he stated that he thinks the transmit line is being overdriven which I think means the voltage is a little bit too high and that applying a resistor in series with the transmit pin should have the same effect as the forced cooling we did. He explained that he discovered this after MPP Solar had sent him some DV9 or serial port connectors that had this resistor in place. Uh, so today we're going to give that a try and see if we can actually get this to flash without the forced cooling because if we have finally figured this out and if the solution is as simple as applying a resistor that is a huge win in my opinion first i'm going to try flashing this without the resistor just to demonstrate that the problem is still present and once that fails then we'll try applying the resistor and reflashing it and seeing if it is successful i haven't even tried this yet so filming this will be my first time so we'll see what happens together all right, so you can see I've got the communications cable plugged into the RS-232 port there, which is coming down to a serial to USB adapter and going into the laptop. On the laptop here, you can see we're flashing version 112.19. Got the flashing tool open. I've selected the COM port. There's only one. I'm going to go ahead and click Update MCU. Okay, and you can see here I actually tried twice because... Uh, the message I got was connect fail, and I was expecting it to actually attempt writing blocks, which it didn't. But, uh, you know, this has been running for a couple of hours, so perhaps it's already heated up beyond a temperature that it can work with. All right, so Ian says the resistor needs to go on the TX pin or the white wire of the connector. And looking at the stock MPP solar cable that came with the inverter, the white wire is on pin number two. And just for reference, I did pin check my cable, and here's the pin out that I found. Now, uh, Ian said to use a 3 kilo ohm resistor, and my assortment of resistors here has 2.2, and then it goes up to 3.3. Um, I don't have any that are exactly 3, so I'm going to try the 3.3 and see if that works. Now, I really don't want to cut this cable to apply a resistor. Um, it is just an RJ45 on the end, which is easy enough to recrimp, but uh, you know, I just didn't want to have to cut it off. So I got this one foot ethernet extension cable here. It's a straight through wire, eight pins. It's made for if you want to panel mount a female RJ45 connector. So what I did is I just cut some of the insulation off this cable. And we can see by looking at the tip of it here that pin number two is the purple wire. Uh, so I simply cut the purple wire and soldered the resistor in series. So now I've got the cable coming out of the inverter, going through the one foot cable, then going down to the MPP solar cable, then going to the USB to serial port cable, then to my laptop. So going back to the computer here, we're once again going to, actually let's close and reopen this just to make sure since the COM port was temporarily disconnected. So we're still on COM3, go ahead and click update MCU. Look at that, it started writing blocks already and it's actually working. So we've got 114 righted blocks. That's what it says here, righted blocks. Um, so we'll come back in approximately 11 minutes and 30 seconds and make sure this finishes. All right, so the flash has completed on just the first try. It took about 12 minutes to complete. You can see the inverter behind me has started back up and resumed normal operation. It is fantastic to finally have a solution to this problem. A huge thank you to Ian and Watts247 for finding this and sharing this information. I will leave links in the video description to where you can find out more about these inverters, download that firmware, uh, any questions or comments you can leave those as well. Please hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.